In this video, I'm going to talk about how you test hypotheses against data by showing you an example. In our example, we have a very nice hypothesis, which is that chocolate makes you live longer. I like that one. The average Australian um, lives for 82 years, and we have got some data. which We've taken a, a small sample of chocolate users, we've averaged them, calculated the uncertainty in some proper way, and we find that they live an average of 85 plus or minus 1.4 years. So we have an hypothesis, chocolate makes you live longer, and we have some data, 85 plus or minus 1.4, which kind of looks like it's correct. But could that just be a fluke due to uncertainties, or have we really got compelling evidence that everyone should go out and eat more chocolate? Well, how can you prove a theory true? You can't. All you can do is disprove the null hypothesis. And disproving null hypothesis is considered the same thing as proving a hypothesis, though it isn't quite. In this case, what is the null hypothesis that we're trying to disprove? Well, that would be that chocolate doesn't make you live longer. So the null hypothesis would be that if you have a sample of chocolate users, they will actually live 82 years on average, not 85, which is what we measured. And that the fact that we measured 85 was just a fluke of the data. But hold on a minute here. If the null hypothesis was true, and everyone lived to a year age of 82, would you expect to ever see a value of 85? Well, that's what we need to work out. If there's 82 and there was no uncertainty. All measurements would come out as 82, and so a measurement of 85 would definitely disprove the null hypothesis. But there is an uncertainty, an uncertainty of 1.4 years. So that means if the null hypothesis was true, people did live 82 on average. Every time you measured a small sample of them, you get a value which was a little bit off that. And that has a standard deviation of 1.4. Now this seems a bit odd. We actually measured 85 plus or minus 1.4, but I've measured a Gaussian, drawn a Gaussian curve around the value of 82. What we are assuming is the uncertainty is independent of the value. So whatever the value is, you'd have an uncertainty of 1.4. And what we're doing now is not looking at our data, but a null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is just that, um, in fact, there's no difference, and we're assuming that the uncertainty is the same. So now we can ask, if the null hypothesis were true and had an uncertainty of 1.4, what are the odds that we'd see a value up here at 85? So in this case, the odds of seeing a value of at least 85 is the integral of this part of the Gaussian. So I drew it going to zero, but in fact it won't quite go to zero, so it probably looks more like that realistically. So that area over here, there's a probability that you'd see a value of 85 or larger. Now 85 is a bit more than two standard deviations away, so that difference here is 3 divided by 1.4, that's 2 and a bit. So that means we are 2 sigma result, or 2 standard deviations. Um, we know that for a Gaussian distribution, you'll be outside of that about 5% of the time, which means 2.5% on this side, and 2.5% on that side. So what this is telling us is, if our null hypothesis were true, then you would expect to see a result as big as 85, less than 2.5% of the time. Another way that's often described is saying this result is significant at the 99.7%, sorry, 97.5% level of significance. Is that enough? Well, in the social sciences, the normal convention is if you have less than a 5% chance of it being a fluke, then you can reject the null hypothesis. If I was a social scientist, I'd now say that we had proven with... 97.5% confidence that uh, chocolate does make you live longer. 
On the other hand, in the physical sciences, we often require a higher level of confidence, often 99 or even 99.9%. So at that level, no. So speaking as a physicist, I would say this is suggestive. It certainly implies that chocolate might be a good thing, but we clearly need to get some better data with smaller uncertainties.